And uh, his talk today is Progress and uh, Perspective of Osteoporosis Treatment. So, Dr. Dr. please. Thank you very much, Dr. Tanaka, for presenting me. Uh, my today's task uh, is to summarize the current development, development and uh, future pers perspectives of uh, osteoporosis treatment. I guess my because porosis is, uh, is characterized by compromised bone strengths predisposing uh, to an increased risk of fracture. Here, uh, bone strength uh, reflects not only bone density but also bone quality. And what bone quality means is that uh, uh, at least there are two components uh, structurally. Uh, in normal uh, trabecular bone, uh, there are uh, thick walls around the, uh, the, 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 the pillars and uh, there are uh, struts uh, in between and so uh, this can tolerate uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, stress from any, any side of the bone. However, uh, with the, the uh, disturbed remodeled balance, balance uh, there's a reduction in the. I, there's a, an increased uh, uh, resorption compared to bone formation, so that uh, the connectivity is lost, and especially when connectivity is lost at the, uh, the struts, uh, the, the length of the pillar uh, becomes double. And when the length of the pillar becomes double, uh, the, 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 the force to support the. the uh, supporting power is uh, uh, divided by uh, mark 2 multiplied by 2, so it means uh, one fourth of uh, the original strength. So uh, the, 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 the change uh, by those uh, the difference in uh, microstructure in the trabecular bone uh, can cause a lot of uh, reduction in bone strength. At the same time, in the cortical bone, when the uh, Remodeling balance is maintained. There is a, uh, the similar size of harbor scars uh, in uh, each osteos. However, when the remodeling balance is disturbed, uh, each uh, canal uh, becomes bigger and becomes uh, pond and uh, bigger uh, and bigger to become sea. So that it's like a trabecular bone. And uh, uh, there's no more cortical bone around here so that the strength of the cortical bone can be, uh, you know, uh, very much damaged. Along with the structural differences, there is a change in material property. This is a little bit different and uh, difficult. So I will not go into detail in this area, but uh, in terms of co collagen crosslinks, after collagen uh, Fibers are deposited to the bone matrix. So they are connected to each other by uh, peridular crosslinks, and these peridular crosslinks uh, are formed from uh, uh, lesion oxidase uh, from lesion, uh, and uh, uh, there are two figures uh, connected to the telopeptide and helix portion of the each collagen fibers. That makes uh, the collagen uh, networks uh, uh, which can tolerate the strengths uh, from uh, tolerate the, the, uh, the, 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 the outside pressure. So uh, the, the, the number of amount of peridinal crosslinks is limited, so it's a saturable uh, process. However, uh, there's uh, also advanced glycation and in the products uh, that can be accumulated uh, to a uh, leasing portion so that the leasing can be uh, metabolized to AGEs by glycation and oxidation process. These AGE crosslinks uh, are not saturable, they form so that uh, uh, if the turnover is reduced, uh, it increases with time. So especially in a, in a high uh, CM glucose situation or oxidative stress uh, environment like aging, 
these AG crosslinks will increase, which will deteriorate the strength of the uh, bone. In addition, there is a, a mineralization process uh, going on, uh, and the secondary mineralization process is time dependent. So, if uh, turnover rate is uh, too low, uh, there's a hyper mineralization of uh, a certain portion of bone. Because uh, bone is, uh, is different in, osteo in each osteum, and in newly formed osteums, there are uh, hypomineralized areas so that these areas can protect from uh, uh, causing a fracture uh, by increasing these microplaques into the, the, the real fracture. But when uh, mineralization uh, takes place too long uh, to f uh, form a homogeneous mineralized uh, bone matrix, then it's easy to be a fracture. So, bone remodeling is maintained to, to keep the bone fresh and strong, and uh, this remodeling balance is maintained by hormones such as uh, sex hormones and calcium regulating hormones, as well as uh, mechanical stress. And uh, circumstances such as rheumatoid arthritis uh, have uh, high inflammatory cytokines, uh, which causes increased bone resorption. And menopause causes a reduction in uh, estrogen and aging, also causes a, a deterioration in the body balance as well as increase in oxidative stress and so forth. Then, uh, disturbed bone remodeling causes a reduction in bone mineral density. At the same time, habit turnover uh, uh, situation causes a, a increased bone resorption compared to bone formation that can deteriorate the uh, structural property of the bone. These changes together uh, cause the uh, reduction in bone strength and uh, becomes bone to be fractured. At the, uh, at the same time, in a different uh, situation where uh, there's hyperglycemia, uh, there's an oxidative stress, or there's too long uh, remodeling uh, activation frequency, then bone uh, strength is also deteriorated by deteriorated uh, material property. So all this change uh, causes a direct reduction in bone strength, strength causing uh, the fragility of bone. Even though bone is strength strong enough, the bone can be fractured. But uh, how can you define bone which is uh, fragile, which is uh, clinically uh, defined as, uh, you know, Falling down from below the height of your your your, your, uh, your height, so fall is uh, one of the most frequent causes of fracture in a in a daily situation. So if falls is another uh, factor for uh, causing fracture, uh, factors such as uh, maintaining muscle strength or physical ability or keeping balance of the body. Uh, will also be a, a risk factor for fracture if uh, the one one can not uh, maintain his balance or uh, physical property activity then uh, can be easily fractured. Also, even though they fall, uh, if soft tissue is enough uh, to buffer the the, the, the uh, stress, it can uh, protect the bone from fracture. But if a soft tissue buffer is reduced, it's also uh, becoming a, a fracture risk. Well, uh, among those situations, uh, bone remodeling is a natural and important repairing process. But uh, menopause, aging, and other uh, situations like uh, inflammatory uh, situations, bone resorption exceeds formation to cause a negative balance of the bone remodeling, causing deeper uh, resorption and lacune, which is uh, uh, not filled uh, by newly formed bones, so that each modeling cycle causes a negative remodeling balance with a deteriorated bone structure. To prevent uh, this heightened of a situation, suppression of bone remodeling 
can be the best way to protect the bone from the bone density loss and the deterioration of the structural property. That's the reason why bone anti-resorptives have been developed uh, widely and uh, currently uh, bisphosphate is the most widely used uh, uh, drugs for osteoporosis. Original bisphosphate uh, titrone is bound to bone in a, in a large amount so that it's uh, inhibitory for mineralization. So if uh, this is used too much, it, it, it covers the hypersubtitled surface to inhibit uh, further mineralization of bone. It is not good for bone, so that the development of this phosphonate has been to make uh, uh, stronger uh, anti-resorptive activity compared to its uh, uh, binding to mineralized surface. So, uh, like a lanternate and resetonate, uh, the, the, the anti-resorptive activity is about, about thousand times as strong as a tibrotate. Now, there are stronger bisphosphonates, such as toledronate and minotronate, which is developed only in Japan, uh, which has about uh, uh, 10,000 times as strong as a tibrotate to inhibit bone resorption. By developing uh, these uh, very strong anti-resorptives, uh, this drug can be given in a longer intermittent uh, manner, so that uh, uh, in a, as an oral administrative uh, bisphosphonate, it's very cumbersome to, to take bisphosphonate before meal. After uh, waking up, you do not eat anything and take a bisphosphonate with uh, just water and wait for more than 30 minutes to have breakfast. Uh, so uh, if it's taken only once a month, like the cetronate, and it's easier for a patient to take so that with better adherence to the third. Well, this phosphonate has been so widely used and has been in use for a very long. But uh, uh, it has become clear that even though you use this phosphonate, especially alentronate, for a very long time, uh, for example, in this flight flex study, if you use this uh, alentronate for uh, five years after five years of, of treatment, the additional five years of uh, alentronate treatment does not uh, really inhibit uh, the fracture, new, de newly developed fracture uh, overall. However, uh, the, the group who studied uh, this flex uh, trial uh, analyzed uh, in, in some groups and uh, demonstrate that if uh, the patient uh, uh, BMD's uh, T score is uh, uh, below or equal to minus 2.5, uh, then there is uh indication for using this phosphorus, still keeping this phosphorus, uh, these patients. And also, if even though if you uh, have prevalent particle fractures, if uh, BMD T score is minus uh, 2.0 or below, uh, the alendronate uh, can be used for a uh, longer time as beneficial uh, drug. However, because uh, each bisphosphonate has its own uh, special uh, uh, characters, recommendations for this combination of bisphosphate need to be drug specific. The reason why I say is that the bisphosphonate acts via inhibition of uh, uh, pharnesyl pyrophosphate synthase, which inhibits the formation of pharnesyl pyrophosphate, which is uh, an intermediate step for uh, synthesizing the cholesterol from uh, mevalonate. But uh, further downstream in this uh, pathway, uh, there's a formation of geraniogenic pyrophosphate which is important for granulation of many proteins, including uh, small g proteins. Especially with uh, row family small g proteins, uh, RAP, row, RAC, uh, these are important for membrane trafficking, basically transport, cytoskeletal organization, and the infecting apoptosis, as well as membrane roughing and cytosis. All these uh, 
Terra processes are essential for keeping the functions of this uh, of uh, osteoplast. So by inhibiting uh, the activity activation of this small gene proteins, this phosphonin is able to strongly inhibit uh, osteoplast specifically. The reason why it is specific is, uh, uh, is uh, out of later. But so one of the one of the uh, the, the, the strengths and the properties of this phosphonate uh, can be uh, distinguished by its affinity for this uh, FPP synthase. And uh, by uh, examining the contact space, contact area for enzyme uh, 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 catalytic uh, uh, surface and uh, uh, hydrogen bonding uh, of uh, each uh, bisphosphonate, uh, there is a, a different affinity of bisphosphonate for this enzyme. Currently, uh, minodronate is the strongest, next uh, followed by zoledronate and risedronate. Uh, surprisingly, arendronate itself is not very high uh, uh, in uh, its affinity for FPP synthase. So the reason why arendronate is so strong in vivo is uh, uh, by different mechanism, which is arendronate uh, can stick to the bone very uh, much amount. Uh, so the disposable uh, action can be defined in many ways. One is uh, the inhibition of that enzyme. But the another is uh, the affinity of the phosphonate at neutral pH uh, to the bone, uh, mineralized bone matrix, such as hydrox appetite. So uh, appropriate affinity for a bone at neutral pH makes uh, more uh, bisphosphonate to be deposited on the bone surface. Then uh, there's osteoclast coming out there to dissolve bone. When osteoclast secret acid, uh, uh, acid environment causes the release of bisphosphonate. So the amount of bisphosphonate that is in, transported into osteoclast is dependent upon how much uh, bisphosphonate is released by this acid environment, such as pH uh, 5 or below. And this also determines, even though very much amount of bisphosphonate uh, is absorbed to the hydroxyapide uh, matrix, it cannot be taken up by osteoclasts very much if its affinity for hydroxyapide is too much when at the uh, acid pH. So it's uh, the balance how much uh, bisphosphonate is taken up in, by osteoclasts. After being taken up, this of this person action can be determined by its affinity uh, for FPP synthesis. So all these characters of this person define uh, its action and uh, uh, adverse effects, uh, clinical adverse effects. At pH 7.4, allegorically is the strongest, followed by zoledronate to be bound to the hydroxyapatite matrix. Minodronate and risodronate are less, much less absorbed to the mineralized surface. At the 5.7, zoledronate is very difficult to be removed. So that, that's the reason, one of the reasons why zoledronate can be used only once a year IV administration. Allegronate is the next uh, to be uh, removed from the bone. But because very much amount of glandonate is taken up by bone, uh, the, the, the action can be enough to develop. Recetronate and minodronate are uh, less uh, removed, uh, or, or much easily removed from uh, the matrix by acid pH. So um, like minodronate, uh, not much is taken up by uh, matrix and uh, very much is removed from the bone. So it, can, it actually can be well uh, developed by uh, this difference, but uh, it's not accumulated very much. Resetonate is uh, uh, similar to that. So minodronate and resetonate are different from alendronate and zoledronate. But uh, unfortunately, the long-term effect and the side effects have been examined most extensively in these two uh, bisphosphonate. One of the problems of long-term use of uh, uh, bisphosphonate is uh, typical femoral uh, fractures. These develop uh, usually uh, 
uh, frequently bilaterally, uh, causing a pain in uh, these areas with the thickening of the cortex. And when you take uh, a scintigraph, there is a positive scintigraph. And uh, uh, when you take MRI, there's one uh, T1 road, pizza high uh, image. And when you leave this patient, there's a fracture oblique or uh, transverse uh, straight uh, fracture. This is very rare uh, and uh, it, uh, it uh, expects to be about 5 in uh, 10,000 patients here. And so a typical femoral fracture is about 5 in uh, 10,000 patients here. And also, risk rapidly decreases after this continuation, and uh, seventy percent per year. So, if you <coughs> stop this postment for two years, the risk risk is reduced very much. But if you use this postment for longer term, it will increase its uh, its uh, uh, risk very much. So, initial two years the risk is very low, but uh, if you use more than eight years, up to ten years. Risk is about uh, 100 times, or close to 100 times as much of the risk of the risk uh, of uh, the first two years. So long-term use of this phosphonate, sticky this phosphonate, may be harmful. Uh, the risk factors for AFF uh, seem to be female, vitamin D deficiency, hypophosphatasia, which causes uh, concave uh, shape of uh, the female and glucocorticoid and uh, proton pump inhibitor use. Uh, the reason I, I don't really know very much. And uh, Asian woman, uh, which may be related to the concave uh, shape, the shape of the femoral bone. Radiological examination is indicated for patients with bilateral femoral pain under this phosphorus treatment for three or more years. And uh, if uh, there is uh, this symptom, uh, we, like, uh, we should uh, stop this phosphonate. But the, 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 the term of uh, this continuation is dependent upon drug, as I mentioned before. And two years is recommended for lendronate, and one year is recommended for uh, resedronate. And do not change the other strong uh, uh, anti-resorptives. And after one or two years, uh, whether to start or uh, cannot start this phosphonate, cannot be uh, predicted by measuring the BMD uh, open turnover markers at that point, which has been published by, by Bobby and Rob. So, this is a very uh, serious complication, so we have to be careful, but the instance is very low. So, bisphosphonate acts on the activated osteoblast with, uh, that uh, resolves the bone. And, uh, after resolving the bone, uh, this phosphonate stops uh, the activity of uh, the osteoclast. However, uh, the development of osteoclast is uh, stimulated by rank ligand uh, binding to its receptor rank. And rank ligand uh, binding to rank causes uh, the, 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 the downstream cascades uh, to be activated, which uh, has been uh, discussed. Uh, intensively, uh, I guess, in this meeting. Uh, when uh, we use anti rank ligand antibody, then, uh, which is called the NOSMA, uh, this inhibits uh, the rank ligand uh, stimulation of osteoclast development and activation. So, rank ligand antibody administration causes a blockade of uh, binding to rank so that the, uh, the, the, the downstream uh, process is uh, gone. So the osteoclast is gone and bone resorption disappears. It's a very strong and uh, the, the antibody stays in the blood uh, for a very long time because it's not uh, excreted from the kidney at all and uh, it's not excreted from the uh, liver to the bile acid which is uh, taken up by uh, uh, endorate, uh, uh, RES uh, reticular uh, RES systems and uh, recycle to the blood. So it takes it, it stays in the blood for, for a very long time. And uh, uh, its current dose of usage is at the, at the middle of this curve. 
and uh, with uh, uh, like 60 milligram uh, dosage, uh, subcutaneously dosage, causes a rapid de uh, decline of bone resorption markers to about, uh, by n about 90%, uh, and it stays for uh, almost four months. And then with this amount of uh, the NOSMA, uh, the resorption is slightly uh, released. Uh, that corresponds to its CM level of such a uh, change, so that if uh, the NOSMAP concentration in the serum is maintained uh, at one microgram per ml concentration, it effect appears to be the strongest and then it dissipates after its uh, level decreases. By this uh, intermediate uh, subcutaneous every six months administration of 60 milligram the NOSMAP, uh, three years uh, uh, clinical uh, uh, fracture prevention clinical study demonstrated that after three years, a uh, new vertebral fracture instance is uh, inhibited by 68%. Non vertebral fracture uh, is inhibited by 20%, and hip fracture is inhibited by 70%, or significantly inhibited. In one uh, study with these uh, uh, targets at the uh, primary endpoint, uh, this is the uh, only drug, and uh, uh, along with Zelenone, uh, to demonstrate these all, all these three uh, efforts. Uh, it's already approved in, uh, in uh, many uh, countries, including in Japan. And uh, uh, the NOSMAP uh, study. Uh, uh, Freedom study is now under extension, and uh, I guess this year is the final 10 year extension. And after eight years, uh, the data has been uh, presented, and after eight years, lumbar spine bone density keeps increasing, increasing. At, the, at eight years, uh, BMD increases 18.5%, and hip BMD uh, increases 8.2% which is much stronger uh, than allegorin. Uh, this phosphate treatment causes an increase in the initial two years, and three years it starts to dissipate, and after that it's uh, not very much increasing bone density. So this increase, steady increase by the NOSMA, is uh, uh, different from any of the classes of this phosphate. Uh, and a new vertebral uh, fracture uh, prevention uh, for three years was, uh, as I mentioned, uh, by, uh, relative risk reduction was 68%. But this extension study shows that in the four and five years uh, combined, it was 1.54%, meaning that 0.7% uh, every year in average. And the 7.8, 7 8 years uh, combined, it, it's 1.2%, so 0.6% in average per year. So uh, the, the instance of the new vertebral fracture is uh, not increasing, but seems to be decreasing still uh, after long-term treatment, up to eight years. More surprising, uh, non vertebral fracture instance is reduced by only 20%, as I mentioned before. But after extension of the study, uh, the incidence of non vertebral fracture seems to be less than the pivotal period, and the average of uh, new non, -vert uh, non vertebral fracture instance is uh, about 1.3 percent, which is uh, uh, less than 40 percent of uh, the, the historical placebo group in this uh, uh, pivotal period. More interestingly, any of the bisphosphonates uh, had uh, uh, any superior effect than uh, teripartite alone or uh, in its own effect uh, in some part of the bone. However, when uh, the NOSPAP was combined with teripartite, the increase in bone mineral density is everywhere in the bone, uh, including uh, lumbar spine, which has more trabecular bone, but uh, also in the femoral neck, which has 70% cortical bone, and the uh, total hip uh, uh, is much higher in combination. 
and that the uh, distal radius, which the, where uh, the reparatite is difficult to increase spominal density uh, uh, by increasing cortical porosity, and that the nosmap slightly increases bominal density, which cannot be seen by any bisphosphonate. But when combined uh, the nosmap with the teriparatide, uh, which is slightly not significant, but uh, slightly higher than the nosmap alone. So uh, this is the first time uh, which has beneficial effect after two years full term treatment with uh, teriparatide to show increase in bominal density at any site of the bone. The reason why I call, uh, that caused such effect was that uh, in TBA, total bominal density is highest in the combined group, and cortical thickness is increased than the, uh, the nosma alone. Uh, compared to the paratite, the paratite does not increase cortical thickness or cortical bominal density. Cortical bominal density is even reduced, as I showed in the uh, TBA. The reason why uh, this occurs by periparatide appears to be due to an increase in cortical porosity. The nosma decreases cortical porosity, uh, which cannot be seen in the, in the, by the bisphosphonate. So it appears that the nosma can penetrate into the deeper area of cortex, cortex and acts to inhibit endocortical bone resorption and reduce cortical porosity. When uh, the nosmap is combined with the paratide, the increase in cortical porosity is totally suppressed and the cortical reduction in cortical porosity is maintained. So it's a very uh, interesting uh, that uh, this combination, if it is necessary to use these strong drugs uh, at the same time for a very severe, very fracture uh, threatening uh, subject, if you don't care about economical issue, this is the best way to protect uh, from fracture in a short period of time. The problem with uh, these very strong anti-resorptive agents is uh, the development of osteonecrosis of the jaw. Originally, it was uh, 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 only bisphosphonate that causes this kind of uh, uh, lesion. Uh, but most of uh, the region, the lesion, is developed by frequent administration of lactose intravenous bisphosphonate to cancer patients with bone metastasis. So doledronate causes 1.4% uh, of uh, uh, patients of uh, OMD, and the denosumab also causes this kind of lesion, uh, but slightly less than 2%. So uh, they both cause this kind of lesion, but the lesion appears to be a little different. This takes longer to be cured, but this takes shorter. So it appears a little different uh, region, but it also develops. Well, in terms of oral administration of this phosphate to osteoporotic patients, the instance is very rare. Uh, one out of 10,000 or 250,000 patients. So it's very rare to develop uh, oral this, uh, this oil gel by oral bisphosphonate administration, but it's feared by many uh, dentists. So uh, it is important to care uh, their periodontal lesions before starting bisphosphonate or the nosma. And if you uh, do a tooth extraction or any invasive uh, uh, dental procedures, the risk increases by more than 100 times. So uh, it's not recommended after tooth extraction or, or any other uh, very aggressive uh, dental procedures. So this is not called uh, now uh, bronchi, but it should be called a uh, medication-related osteonecrosis of the jaw. Well, I mentioned about two uh, modes of action to inhibit bone resorption, bisphosphonate and uh, the nosma. But osteoblasts resolve bone by secreting acid uh, to remove uh, collagen, uh, hyper, hi, collagen uh, uh, to remove hydroxyapatite matrix. And after that, 
like dopamine enzyme, catepsin K, is released and uh, degrade uh, collagen at the acid environment. So catepsin K action is essential for uh, causing the deep uh, erosion of the bone surface due to maintain bone resorption. To, so uh, the inhibitor of catepsin K has been developed, uh, named after uh, Dr. Gideon Rodan, and Rodan anti-catepsin inhibitor. So uh, organocatepsin is developed by Merck, uh, and the effect uh, for five years is very robust. This also increases lumbar bone mineral density by 12% total hip bone density by 8.5% and uh, similarly at any portion of the, uh, of the important bones. So all this new development which is now uh, almost ready for filing to FDA, all these uh, newly developed uh, drugs uh, shows uh, markedly uh, increasing, uh, increase in bone mineral density. Now there's a, a bone forming agent which uh, acts, acts on a canonical wheat signal. Canonical wheat signal is essential for the differentiation of osteoblast and development of uh, osteoblast uh, that forms bone. So uh, like wheat 10 b uh, it binds to LRP5 or 6 with fritz uh, to, to cause uh, the, 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 the inhibition of beta catenin phosphorylation uh, to enhance uh, its transplational activity uh, to, to, to start uh, differentiation of osteoblasts. There are many inhibitors of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, this canonical insignia uh, that acts on LRP56. Uh, I guess uh, it's important to inhibit in uh, each tissue uh, BKK1, 2, uh, 3, or other, but uh, and, uh, secreted fruit related protein 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, acts uh, uh, on a different way. So, canonical wheat signaling is inhibited by these factors, but especially sclerostin is secreted from osteocyte, exclusively from osteocyte, and it acts specifically in the bone to inhibit the, uh, with the canonical wheat signaling. So an um, antibody is to inhibit uh, sclerosis specifically uh, in the bone is developed, and uh, one of which is romosomal, which has been published in early in this year. Uh, in uh, the phase two study, demonstrated only one year's treatment because its effect is very robust. Uh, it uh, appears that the treatment period uh, will be restricted by uh, restricted to one year. But the 12 months treatment increases lumbar bone density over 10%, total hip BMD to near four, nearly 4%, 4 and so forth. There's another uh, sclerostin antibody developed uh, by other company, which is Romosozma, which is a little behind Romosozma, but uh, shows a, a little stronger effect uh, in a the same time of period, uh, just one year's treatment of glossosma uh, uh, at the highest dose of glossosma uh, causes an increase in over 80, 18% uh, of the bone mineral density. But the final uh, dose appears to be uh, uh, <coughs> probably uh, this amount. Uh, Self-injection every week of 90 would maybe the final uh, uh, wait, I don't, uh, I don't know. Uh, that it will increase set 12 to 13 uh, percent. I don't know. I shouldn't say, but uh, uh, but also total hip bone mineral density is increased tremendous. So these uh, uh, agents can increase uh, modeling independent uh, modeling based bone formation that increases the 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 the. the size of uh, long bones that will be tremendously increasing uh, the strength of uh, non-vertebral bones. So uh, this uh, development of this strong bisphosphate and uh, this strong anti-osophotic uh, drugs, there is uh, a movement to create a goal for treatment of uh, osteoporosis, just like uh, diabetes, uh, cholesterol, hypertension, uh, uric acid, and so forth. 
So now uh, the task force is uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, proposing one of the, uh, uh, the, the points uh, for BMD, T score uh, minus 2.5 uh, uh, is one of the target, but there's a still discussion that this should be 2.0 so that uh, uh, much uh, less fractal be expected. Uh, I don't know if FRAX is a good factor uh, to be used because uh, increasing FRAX uh, by this uh, depends very much upon the volume of density. Uh, and uh, FRAX by itself increases with age. So uh, I don't know much about uh, uh, this to be included here. So, the, the, but the important thing is to recommend the treatment with at least 50% probability of achieving treatment goal within three to five years. If the goal is here, the, 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 the average increase in bominal density has to be over 10%, either 12% or so forth. So newly developing drugs can achieve this goal, but uh, uh, already achieved drugs, right? very few of them, can achieve goal. The uh, uh, not may do it, but uh, those uh, very strong drugs can be uh, protecting uh, uh, from uh, osteoporotic fractures. With all these new drugs uh, in the market, uh, we call we used to call bisphosphonate some the not as anti-resorptive agent, the repartite as an anabolic agent. But both of these not only reduce bone resorption, but with bone formation. The reparatite not only increases bone formation, but increases bone resorption. In contrast, other negative reduce bone resorption, but because osteoclasts are there, that there are many osteoclasts kind that emphasis appears to influence bone formation, and bone formation is not uh, appear to be inhibited. So it may be better to call these agents as bone terminal suppressor and the Real anti-resorptive should be of the mechanic. We'll see. And in the case of bone anabolic agent, teleparatide not only increases bone formation by resorption, but homososma, glossosma of anti-sclerosis antibody increases bone formation. But uh, bone resorption is not increased, but it's even reduced. And the, the, the effect on bone formation dissipates within one year. But uh, during one year, bone resorption is uh, suppressed slightly, so there is an anabolic window throughout the year. So it may be better to call anabolic agent for these, and the part that may be better called as bone turnover enhancer. I was going to talk about the importance of active vitamin D, but the time is over, so I just want to mention that in Japan there is active vitamin D called Ericasto, that not only enhance calcium absorption, but also inhibits osteoclast formation and uh, 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 removes osteoclast precursor from the uh, bone surface by reducing uh, chemoris particles receptor for S1P and uh, shows a stronger bone um, protective effect uh, than alpha calcidol, especially uh, in some part of non vertebral bone. So uh, this kind of uh, uh, active vitamin D in combination uh, with the strong anti-resorptives, this also has bone, remote, uh, bone activity, uh, protecting bone can be uh, better achieved. Uh, and vitamin D also have an effect to maintain motor function and body uh, maintaining bone fat. So fracture can be better protected by protecting folds. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much uh, for your very nice overview of the state of uh, the art of the process. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Yes. Uh, you mentioned that so the future treatment of patients becomes sort of patient-specific. They're putting together an optimal plan for each patient. To what extent do you think that a uh, 
genetic analysis of the variations in genes that affect these pathways might come in and help the clinicians making uh, decisions as to what program of treatment should be followed. Thank you, Bill. Uh, it's an excellent, important question. And also some of the osteoporotic patients, especially young idiopathic osteoporotics, has problems in with signaling pathways. And, uh, and uh, some of them have uh, problems with those uh, LRP5 or 6, uh, which has not been characterized well enough. So those patients, maybe a, if, if those patients are picked up early, we may be able to, to implement uh, those uh, anti-sclerosing antibody, which may be able to act better than any other drug, so that the choice of drug may be affected by your certain uh, uh, finding of uh, uh, genetic background. Um, you mentioned the molecular mechanism of the bisosonate, the, but not the anti-apoptotic uh, effect of a bisosonate and osteocyte, which might be a, a major effect, especially in cell induced osteoporosis. So, um, do you think this uh, anti-apoptotic effect is a, is a curiosity, or does, do you think it has a real uh, importance in the efficacy of bisosonate on uh, osteoporosis treatment? Thank you very much. I'm very aware of the Stavros data about the anti-apoptotic effect on uh, osteocytes of these phosphonates. Uh, that's a very uh, different, difficult uh, issue to answer because I myself do not have the experience in an animal experiment or any other experiment to demonstrate its anti-apoptotic effect, uh, uh, especially straight on steroid induced osteoporosis. But it, it is true that in the steroid uh, osteoporosis patients, uh, many of the osteotypes appear to be in an apoptotic state. And uh, this phosphate treatment acts very well, inhibits very nicely the, 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 the fractures. But the data are very limited uh, in terms of length, uh, up to one or two years only. And uh, the main effect uh, in protecting bone is its anti-resorptive activity. And if it acts on osteocytes to maintain the uh, osteocytes better, it should be able to have its effect longer. And uh, we hope it, that effect is there, and then we may be able to use this phosphonet for a longer term for those patients, but uh, uh, currently I don't know. So actually you showed some of the drugs uh, which uh, inhibit uh, signaling pathways like wind and others. But um, uh, wind and other signaling pathways might be uh, like required for other tissues as well. Uh, and giving these drugs uh, can have an adverse effect on those tissues. So would you like to comment about that? Like Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, wind is one of the on oncogenes. <laughs> yeah. uh, so if you inhibit wind uh, uh, inhibitors, you know, in a total body, that should create many, many, many problems. That's the reason why it has to be bone specific. And sclerostin is a very local uh, fa factor. Sclerostin is created from osteocytes almost exclusively, which is the current knowledge. If there is something else, somewhere else, it's excreted, that may cause a, a problem in cancer or something in, in the future. Like even if it is given locally, then even around the bones, there are muscles and everything. And um, if, I don't know if muscle sclerosis is there or if it affects us. <coughs> I'm sorry, I, I, I may not be able to pick up your, 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 your question, but uh, you, you said, did you say sclerosis is, is expressed other than osteocytes? No, no, I'm saying that even if it is given locally, in a locally guided manner to the bone, and nearby the bone there are muscles and other tissues like mm -hmm. tendons. And mm -hmm. I, I'm not aware if there is in those tissues. Yeah, is being yeah. Uh, people are afraid of it. So the, uh, during the early stage of clinical development, they are very, very keen about those issues, but they did not develop. But the only problems uh, about cancer and so forth is uh, in those uh, bronchosomal studies, there are three breast cancer patients developed 
only in Japan. And, uh, and those patients are very uh, early stages of breast cancer. And currently, we believe there's no sclerosing expression in the breast tissues. So we currently believe that uh, it's not due to the drug effect. So, so it's a follow-up of that question. Um, osteocyte, uh, we very well interact, or those os osteoblasts or osteocyte is secreted the weight. Now, we know they express lots of weight into uh, the nearby tissue. And I think the most important ones probably are those bone, bone marrow cells. And I think there is a report saying that if you increase wind signal, and you will see maybe blood tumor develop. And I just wonder, whether there is any study uh, related to that, you know, watch the long-term effect of sclerosis uh, antibody treatment. And my second question related to that is that, has anybody, maybe there is somebody, are trying to use combination of antibodies, sclerosis monoclonal antibody and the rancolitin monoclonal antibody, and if you combine this two, you can reduce both dosage and uh, therefore reduce the, the risk of cancer caused by weight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, the first question, uh, it's, it's very close to bone marrow, and if we include the signaling by uh, enhanced signaling by sclerosis uh, from all cell sites, does it affect bone marrow cell differentiation and cell development? The, the answer is uh, we don't know. And uh, it appears, you know, we do not know. You know, sclerosis concentration in the serum is measurable, and many people measure serum sclerosis uh, level. But I really myself don't know what it means. Uh, it's very much different from the the, the the situation in the bone. What happens in the bone in terms of sclerosis and the weight balance, and uh, the serum sclerosis level may not reflect. And the local uh, sclerosing action to 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 weak signaling, so it, 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 that is not my straight answer. But the anti-sclerosing antibody treatment uh, should affect those sclerosing serum concentrate uh, serum circulating sclerosing. But uh, at least uh, any of the data so far has uh, shown. Uh, development of uh, leukemia or any bone marrow uh, disorders. If there's any, a few of them, uh, this drug may stop. And the second question, rank line and the, uh, antibody and the uh, sclerosis may uh, mutually uh, affect uh, in a better way. Uh, Maybe act synergistically, so, so you can yeah. reduce yeah. the dosage of both. Yes. Uh, it, it, it's a, a very uh, difficult uh, issue. Uh, the uh, sclerosis effect is on anabolic effect is not very strong throughout. It, it, it peaks about uh, three to six months. And uh, enhancement bone formation uh, dissipates toward the end of one year. It's almost gone. But the bone, and bone resorption marker uh, quickly is reduced for the first three months and then stays below the baseline. So somehow the, the change in the differentiation stage of osteoblast affects uh, the rank uh, uh, OPG balance. That may affect uh, this kind of uh, you know, it's been already known that the uh, sclerosis affects uh, bones or uh, stabilized di uh, differentiation states that express more of a uh, OPG this, uh, uh, expressing osteoblast. So that, that may be affecting such kind of uh, phenomenon. If you add the nosmal to it, that will totally affect very much. So I don't know. Uh, no, no, no study has been done. So, sir, here. Oh, here, here. Oh, yeah. One, one more question, actually. So, uh, can you uh, really uh, tell us, like, how were these uh, actual uh, these drugs actually discovered, or were they specifically designed uh, to be acting on uh, these specific targets? How did we uh, came to know about all these drugs? How 
how these drugs are uh, sold to the, the, well, you know, I have to ask uh, David the lazy. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, they're smart guys, you know. <laughs> I heard that one of the way to identify squirrels thing is that uh, they sort of uh, uh, autosomal uh, yes. recessive mutant. That's a squirrel stiosis. So yeah, they identify that's squirrel. very important. Uh, Africana from uh, Dutch uh, immigrant to South Africa. Uh, the, the, the disease is called sclerostosis, and those are very high bone mass stem type developed, and the mutation was found which was uh, by sclerosis. So, so it, it's a human disease that shows a high bone mass with no fracture in these patients. So, thank you. I'll start your face before you are here. silent over you. So my question is um, whether you or any other expect uh, to know um, whether any like a system so biology or a system biology device can have been developed in uh, this field because I'm new from bio, bio, bone biology, okay? So, like in cancer field, they have uh, designed some artificial pH sensor and uh, then after certain pH value low than like, pH 5, then they can have uh, such a device called initial cell test process. So, and so you have uh, shown us the uh, PPP and the uh, HAP affinity and uh, correlated the pH value. So my question is whether any lab or any you know, one has designed some device can offset the pH value or I want concentration then can switch some uh, uh, switch the pathway such as like a momentum pathway to, um, uh, to avoid some side effects uh, very difficult question. Uh, it's in diabetes and the cancer, they all have this kind of a device. So, artificial synthetic uh, um, approach to uh, to this kind of a job. I think you probably know. Just, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the type 2 diabetes patient uh, has a uh, high bone mineral density but uh, high fracture than uh, non-diabetes. And um, currently, many people uh, show us uh, that uh, there is uh, accumulation, high accumulation of AGE crosslinks in, in the bone, in animal studies especially, in not humans, but in humans, there's a higher level of AGE, some of the AGE products like uh, uh, pentosity and so forth. And, uh, those uh, change in the bone quality uh, uh, may affect uh, the strength of bone uh, uh, in, a, in the case of diabetes. Probably he wants to ask, well, is there any sophisticated way to design a drug that uh, acts as anabolic at one phase and then anti resorptive at the other ah. phase or change? Yeah. Yeah. I see. Yeah. The aim is that, uh, okay, like you already show the pitch. Um, affinity, you can, uh, this wow. value is the yeah. for the PHP and HAP affinity, okay? So after the there is um, side effects for long time. So whether you can design... Yeah, uh, there, there are many uh, systems biology people who are working on the big data on bone, and uh, that will be in a future generation's work, and not our <laughs> generation. We, we, we have not uh, been able to answer any of the Thing, uh, to you, can, yours. you can design it. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank <laughs> <laughs> so you. Actually, uh, I'm wondering because um, my friends design one kind of uh, PhD sensor is for cancer. They are just uh, exact for ratio, but uh, I just wonder whether this same principle can apply for the bone biology for like a bone fracture, you know? So this is why I asked the question for number with the wind signaling. You have feedback here and then you can switch it. Yeah, no. should be able to do, yeah, please, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you.